Thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, President Biden arriving in Israel once again, pledging American support for the Jewish state. But many in Israel are concerned about how strong that support will prove to be. What is the impact of the propaganda war over a massive explosion at a hospital in Gaza City? Will it inflame tensions even more in the Middle East? Could it happen here? Security experts are sounding the alarm. America is at risk of attacks similar to what Israel experienced, especially with the border wide open. We're going to take a look at the potential terrorist threats to the United States. And what do Israelis do when terrorists fire rockets into their country? We'll see how help from CBN Israel has made families feel safer when the alarms go off. All those stories and more are ahead today on CBN News Watch. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour in Israel, where President Biden arrived today showing his support for the Jewish state. But many Israelis are concerned that behind the scenes, the U.S. may actually be putting some brakes on Israel's war to destroy Hamas. Those concerns coming amid a blame game over who was responsible for a deadly explosion at a hospital in Gaza City. Chris Mitchell brings us the story now. He's in Jerusalem. Upon his arrival, President Biden reiterated his commitment to Israel. Americans are grieving with you. They really are. And Americans are worried. Americans are worried because we know there's a, this is not an easy field to navigate, what you have to do. But uh, the fact is that Israel, as they respond to these attacks, it seems to me that uh, have to continue to ensure that you have what you need to defend yourselves. And uh, we're going to make sure that occurs. But above all, Mr. President, the world sees that support and the moral clarity that you have demonstrated from the moment Israel was attacked. You've rightly drawn a clear line between the forces of civilization and the forces of barbarism. You describe what Hamas did as sheer evil. It is exactly that. Yet Josh Reinstein, president of the Israel Allies Foundation, told CBN News many Israelis are concerned about Biden's visit. I think people are worried it's a double-edged sword. You know, we're seeing that the sanctions on Iran are being lifted as we speak on ballistic missiles. We're seeing that the American administration is not pointing the finger at, pink finger at the Iran, even though we know that Hamas and Hezbollah is their proxy armies and they fund them, they equip them, they train them. Um, so people are worried to see what's what's going to happen. Carolyn Glick from the Jewish News Syndicate reported U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken issued a warning to Israel's war cabinet. Tony Blinken was threatening uh, withholding American war material from Israel that we need, um, specifically uh, things like bunker buster bombs and other things, including um, including artillery shells. Um, and uh, unless Israel provides humanitarian aid. Glick points out all humanitarian aid in Gaza goes into the hands of Hamas. The U.N. group UNRWA tweeted recently that Hamas stole food and fuel from their compound. CBN News reached out to the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem for a response to Glick's reporting, but has yet to receive a reply. A major part of the president's trip was canceled after Hamas accused Israel of striking a hospital in Gaza. Jordan's foreign minister canceled the meeting between President Biden, Jordan's King Abdullah, Egyptian President al-Sisi, and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Demonstrators in Istanbul, Jordan, Hebron, and others protested what they called a massacre by the IDF. The IDF presenting evidence, it says, shows a failed rocket launch by the Islamic Jihad. I can confirm that an analysis of the IDF operational systems indicates that a barrage of rockets was fired by terrorists in Gaza, passing in close proximity to the El Hali Al Mahdi hospital in Gaza at the time it was hit. Intelligence from few sources that we have in our hands indicates that the Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch which hit the hospital in Gaza. I repeat, this is the responsibility of Islamic Jihad that killed innocents in the hospital in Gaza. The IDF showed video of the failed launch and a recording between Hamas and Islamic Jihad admitting the failed launch. 
This video shows the damage done to the parking lot next to the hospital, which military experts say resembles a rocket strike, not a bomb, which leaves a crater. The IDF also says Hamas is inflating the number of dead. And President Biden also reiterated Israel did not bomb the hospital. Israel's defenders say the hospital is now part of a propaganda campaign waged by Hamas in the international media. Chris Mitchell joins us now from Jerusalem. So, Chris, what has been the impact in the Middle East of this tragedy at this hospital? Are many people believing Hamas or Israel? Well, right now, uh, Ephraim, what happened was that there was initial outrage in blaming Israel, and that happened last night when the, uh, when the rocket hit. And then immediately, almost protests were through the region. That happened in Turkey, in Jordan, in the West Bank, and other places. And it was spread on social media. Uh, then there was a shift. There was more evidence that came out that it was a failed uh, rocket launch, and the evidence was pretty compelling. So I think uh, this is, as I said at the end of the report, it's really a part of the uh, propaganda war. Uh, thankfully, President Joe Biden defended Israel, uh, and he said it surely looks like it was the, a failed rocket launch by uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Then there were others, the UAE and others, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, they're understanding it's not Israel. What it does, uh, Ephraim, it reminds me of a place called Jenin. Back in the Second Intifada, there was a claims of a mass a massacre there. Uh, it actually turned out to be a, a battle between uh, Islamic uh, terrorists and the IDF. About 56 terrorists were killed in that. Uh, and it w they claimed it was 500. So for about 12 hours, 24 hours, the word gets out and, uh, and things believe a lie instead of what the truth is. Reminds me of a quote by uh, Winston Churchill who said, uh, you know, a lie gets halfway around the world before truth gets its pants on. President Biden has spoken about his standing by Israel, but as you said in your report, there are concerns in Israel about the administration's support not remaining steadfast. Does that concern reach into the Israeli government? Uh, I think so, and I, I think that that leak to uh, Carolyn Glick by would be someone in the know that uh, knew what was going on with that interview, that that meeting with Antony Blinken and the War Cabinet. Uh, there's other concerns, as uh, Josh Reinstein ex expressed, which is not getting a lot of attention. Sanctions have expired today on the ballistic missile parts for Iran, uh, and uh, as well, the administration doesn't seem to be connecting the dots on Iran, how it's connected to Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, involved in specifically the Hamas incursion on, uh, on October 7th. So right now, the ground incursion seems to be on pause, and we're hearing that the morale is waning on the front lines. The battalion commanders, they want to get going, going into Gaza. But from the higher up echelons are saying, pa, uh, don't go in. It's on the northern front and the southern front. Uh, and so people believe it might be the United States behind the scenes, uh, you know, p putting the pause button on. They, there's great optics. They're saying great things. Uh, but it just remains to be seen. Is U the U.S. behind what the, this whole pause is going about? And as uh, uh, Josh Reinstein said in our interview, 99% of Israelis are in it to win it. And there's a real motivation by the Israeli public to get this started. Many Americans are concerned U.S. forces will be dragged into this fight, possibly leading to boots on the ground in Israel. Is that likely, especially if Hezbollah attacks Israel? Well, it seems like it might be possible. They have 2,000 maybe uh, Marines and, and other servicemen and women uh, with medical and intelligence uh, areas. Uh, but since Hezbollah is a much more formidable en enemy, maybe uh, Israel will want that help. But, uh, you know, I've heard over and over, Ephraim, by Israeli leaders and others, we don't want Isra uh, American soldiers to fight our battles. Give us the munitions. Give us the equipment to fight our battles. But we don't need the boots on the ground. Real quickly, Iran sponsors Hamas and Hezbollah. Does Israel have any plans to deal with Iran in the longer term? Yes, uh, Ephraim, they do. Uh, the question is when, and it's important to remember in all of this, uh, overshadowing Hezbollah and uh, Hamas, the existential threat remains a nuclear Iran as they race to get the bomb, as they get closer to enrich uranium, and as they have sanctions lifted on their uh, ballistic missiles to be able to get parts for that. Uh, so that is the existential threat. When that happens, how Israel deals with it is still a question here in the Middle East.
Our CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell, thank you so much. Continued uh, reporting and stay safe. Thank you. Coming up, is America safe from the kind of attack Hamas carried out against Israel in October, October 7th to be exact? We'll take a look at that important question and some disturbing answers when we come back. You're watching CBN News Watch. Download the CBN News app. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News, because truth matters. Get the CBN News app today. Could it happen here? Is America safe from the kind of attack Hamas carried out against Israel? The borders to the U.S. remain dangerously vulnerable, and some information confirms terrorist sleeper cells are already in place. Dil Hurd is following this story. Under questioning by FBI agents, New Yorker Ali Karani admitted in 2017 to being a member of something called Unit 910. It's the black ops unit of Hezbollah, controlled by Iran. Karani told agents he was trained to be a suicide bomber and was scouting targets in New York City. He's now in prison. Another Unit 910 member in prison this year, New Jersey resident Alexi alias Alex Saab, had also scouted potential targets around New York City. While the exact number of Hamas and Hezbollah sleeper cells operating within the United States is not known, a comprehensive study by George Washington University last year found the most Hezbollah activity in Michigan, New York, North Carolina, and California. If Americans are wondering if they're safe from the kind of attack Hamas carried out against Israel, terrorism experts say the answer is not encouraging. Former FBI Special Agent Eric Karen. We have over a thousand joint terrorism task force cases going on here in America today relating to Muslim extremists. So far this year, authorities have caught 151 people on the FBI's terrorism watch list trying to illegally enter the U.S. through the southern border. That's 50 times higher than two years ago. Most are coming through Panama's Darien Gap, where journalist Michael Yan says he's seeing three to 5,000 migrants pass through every day on their way to the U.S. I see a lot of Chinese coming through. Most of the people you see coming through are military-age males of any sort, right? I see uh, Afghans coming in by the thousands. I've had people come through that say they're from Gaza. CBN News correspondent Chuck Holton has also reported from the Darien Gap and says he has no doubt dangerous persons are headed for the U.S. border. I interviewed a guy from Afghanistan. Uh, we found many people from Somalia and Yemen. We found people from Syria, uh, Iran. We have seen people coming through. Former agent Karen is especially concerned about America's ports, where Customs and Border Protection is supposed to scan every incoming container for radiation, but physically inspects only 3%. We have 328 ports of entry into America. They all have to be secure, and many of them are soft. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy warned this week that what happened in Israel could happen here. McCarthy said, we should wake up ourselves. We could have the same thing happen next week to us. Our intel is never perfect, and we've got a wide open border. The idea that they don't want to attack us again, like a 9-11, but even bigger, is foolish. They want to attack us. They want to destroy America. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Still ahead, 15 seconds to find shelter. That's how long these Israelis have from the sound of the alarm to the moment of impact. Thousands of rockets have been fired towards Jewish homes, bus stops, and kindergartens near the Gaza Strip. We're going to show you how CBN partners have given those in the danger zone a safe place to go. We've got that story for you right after this. In the first hours of Hamas's attack on October 7th, the terrorists fired more than 2,000 rockets into Israel. Jewish communities near Gaza have endured these deadly attacks for years. Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl shows us how help from CBN Israel has made families feel safer when those alarms go off. Moshav Yesha is one of many Israeli communities not far from the Gaza border. 
When a rocket is fired and red alert sounds, they usually have about 15 seconds to run to their in-home bomb shelter. You're under pressure, you're in stress. It's impossible to get used to this situation. Every red alert, you get a cardiac arrest and crazy pressure. We adults can handle it. I run to the shelter and everything's fine. I'm also stressed, but I know how to calm down afterwards. For the children, it's a little bit more difficult. The stress can be even higher when the alarm sounds and residents are away from home. Daniel Carlson says that's where CBN Israel stepped in to help. Well, I would say that probably the, the very top priority for any resident of that area is the issue of security. They know that the issue of rocket fire, spur of the moment, very short notice. In just over a year, CBN Israel has provided 20 bomb shelters in strategic locations around the Gaza Strip. This one is next to a tennis court about four miles from the Gaza border. We were able to take bomb shelters and strategically place them near bus stops, kindergartens, community centers, swimming pools, anywhere where people are congregating so that they can get to a shelter at a moment's notice because that's the way life is built down there. Galit says the one placed in her community delivers a great benefit. First of all, thank you very much. It's not something we take for granted. We have many surprises. You're not prepared or you're on the way to some place, and we have this shelter on the way. It calms the children and gives them security to go and play a little. Ella says even though the situation is scary, she's thankful for the protection. To run for a red alert is very, very stressful. But I also understand I have to deal with this because it protects me. The children in Gaza, they don't have a red alert. They don't have a shelter. So I have to say thank you that we have this. In the aftermath of the Hamas invasion, Carlson says CBN Israel will listen to the people in the communities to help provide what they need to begin healing and move forward. We as the Christian community want to stand by our friends in the Gaza Strip area that have come under this attack. We want to be that voice of comfort. We can't change the reality on the ground, but comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, that is something that we can do. We can extend a hand of mercy to those who need it in their time of need. We want to be that for them. So now is the time, that is for sure. Julie Stahl, CBN News. And we want to thank CBN Partners for your support to help make these shelters possible. Coming up, she was a member of the famous girl group, but now Kaya Jones is talking about the, p the price of, and pain of stardom and the power of God's forgiveness and healing. We're going to hear from her when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching CBN Newswatch. Welcome back to CBN Newswatch. Kaya Jones, a former member of the girl group Pussycat Dolls, is opening up, sharing the painful cost of stardom and God's healing power and forgiveness. She's got a faith-filled, inspiring story that turns the dark side of entertainment into a bright spot. In the beginning tells your story. When I officially became a Pussycat Doll, I was 18, and this went on until I was 20. It was a... Yay, I got the job, but only for a second. You're now part of a grooming process that curates young minds. Comes a promise, and every heartbeat testifies. When I compared it to a prostitution ring, I compared it that way because we were performing at Divas Live. I had gone through a forced abortion, so if you get pregnant, you're fired. I had had this abortion, complications were in the abortion, I was actually hemorrhaging during that time. I'm being told by the owner of how fat I look in the process of losing my child. There's these two little girls in the front row, and the baby one looks at her mom and she goes, oh, Mommy, she's a pussycat doll. And I just felt gutted. This little girl wants to be me or has this idea of beauty in this moment and I am so broken. That was the beginning of, I gotta get out of here. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but God, you gotta help me do it. Cause I can't sell this to kids, I can't do this. I can't let that little girl think that this is beautiful because this is not beautiful. To prophesy and speak and I know young women today have this idea that's so false. 
the only way you get through it is if you give it to God and he wants to make the broken pieces right. So whether it's addiction or it's pornography or it's abortion or abuse, whatever it is, we all have a story, right? Um, we hand it to him and say, you, you do what only you can do. There is a God and, and he created us and we have a purpose and you're not just a clump of cells, you're not just whatever, you have a divine purpose in Jesus and if you know who he is, he will activate who you are in him. Breathe Into Me is available right now wherever you get your music. For more uplifting entertainment news, be sure to join us for a new edition of Studio 5 tonight. We're sitting down and talking with a music group that's blending contemporary Christian with gospel. They're called One House, and it's actually founded by Tori Roberts along with his wife, Sarah Jakes Roberts. You can catch it on the CBN News Channel at our new time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app, or you can see it on YouTube. Time now for your Wednesday word, and today I just want to remind you with the scripture. Ephesians 3.20, it reads, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. The exceeding abundant above all is what we often focus on, but don't lose sight of the second half of that. It is according to the power that worketh in us. So that exceeding abundantly above all it is in you. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always get more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time, as well as online. That address is cbnnews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Make this a wonderful Wednesday and join us right back here same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.